Hi, I'm Miss Hearn. Let's get started. And if you find this video helpful, please remember to give it a thumbs up. That helps other students to find the video. In this video, we're going to be talking about Hamilton's method of apportionment. There are certain terms you're going to see no matter what kind of apportionment method you're using. One of those terms is standard divisor. That's the total population divided by the house size. And we're going to find that in step one of every single apportionment method. Another term you're going to see over and over again is standard quota, which is each state's population divided by the standard divisor we found in step one. We're going to find the standard quota in step two of every single apportionment method. But that's where things start to change depending on the apportionment method. For Hamilton's method, step three is going to be to find the state's lower quota, which just means rounding the standard quota down to a whole number. Step four is going to be where we hand out the fractional parts. In other words, if there are seats left over after we hand out all the seats based on the lower quota, we have to decide who to give those seats to. And we're going to base that on who had the largest fractional part. This is unique to Hamilton's method. And then finally, after we've handed out those extra seats, we're going to check our solution by confirming that the sum of the modified quotas, which are the lower quotas with the additional seats added in, actually equals the house size, the total number of seats. Let's begin with this example. We're going to apportion 25 seats among states based on their populations. Step one, we find the standard divisor. We divide the total population, 3,972, by the 25 seats, which is the house size, gives us of 158.88. What that means is that there are 158.88 people represented by each seat in our House of Representatives, Parliament, whatever the case may be. Next, we're going to do step two. We're going to take each state's population and divide it by that standard divisor, 158.8 to get that state's standard quota. For example, if we divide 53 by 158.88, we get a standard quota of 0 0.33359. That means that that state in a fair apportionment would receive a third of a representative approximately. If we divide 201 by 158.88, we get a standard quota of 1 1.26511. That means that that state deserves roughly one and a quarter representatives. And then we'll continue with this process dividing each state population by the standard divisor. Now, if you add up all the standard quotas, you should get the number of seats or something very close to it. So in this case, we get 25. The problem here is that we can't give state A, for example, a third of a representative or state B one and a quarter representatives or state E 12 and a half representatives. So what are we gonna do to apportion this in a fair way? We're gonna do step three. We're going to give each state the lower quota. So for example, here in state A is going to get zero, the lower quota quota is the standard quota rounded down. So you're just going to get the whole number part, 0, 1, 5, 5, and 12. Notice that I am not rounding off by traditional rounding, I'm rounding down. We will always get a number that is less than or equal to the standard quota. This means that when we add up the lower quotas, we're going to get a number less than or equal to the total number of seats of 25. In this case, it adds up to 23, which leaves two extra seats unaccounted for that we'll have to decide who to give those to. The way that Hamilton's method deals with that is by identifying the fractional parts of the standard quota. So for example, in uh, state A, we had 0 0.33359. So 0 0.33359 is the fractional part. For state B, we had 1.2651. So 0 0.26511 is the fractional part and so on. Now of the two additional seats that we have left over out of the 25, 
we have to decide who to give those to. Automatically, I'm going to give one of those two extra Cs to state A because right now the lower quota gives state A nothing and they have to at least get one representative. So we're gonna put one of them there, but we have one additional seat that we have to hand out to one of the other states. And Hamilton figured we would give it to the state that had the largest fractional part. Here we see that 0.77165 is the largest out of these fractional parts. That's the closest to a whole number, in other words. So we're gonna give that one seat to that state. So now we're gonna take the lower quota plus the additional seats, and we're gonna get one, zero plus one is one, and we just carry over the one, the five, five plus one is six, and we bring over the 12. We've completed step four. So this is our final apportionment, and we're gonna check that it's correct by just adding these up. This adds up to 25, so it looks like we're in good shape. So this is the Hamilton apportionment done by hand. You can also visit my website, MissHernMath.com, where I have an apportionment calculator where you can plug in the values of the state populations and the house size into the green boxes, as I've done here, and it's going to automatically tell you what the final apportionment should be. So you can use that to check your work, and it looks like we got it right. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. That helps other students to find the video. Look for my other apportionment videos on Jefferson's, Adams, and Webster's methods too.